This footer is a footer that I see in every single awards winning website. It's kind of a sticky footer with a reveal animation. So I want to take a look at two ways of making this using pure CSS. And I'm also going to use React, but it won't matter. You can just apply the principles of the video into the framework of your choice. And also you can find the live demo and the source code in the description below. All right, so what I have for now is just a simple page with a footer. And now I want to take a look at two ways of making this footer sticky and have like this reveal effect. So there are two ways of making it, one using the fixed position and the other method is by using the sticky position. And also there's this limitation when making a sticky footer is we need to always set a fixed height. All right, we can have a dynamic height. That's kind of the downside of doing it in pure CSS. Obviously, if we use JavaScript, we could probably find a way to have a dynamic height and so a height that adjusts itself depending on the layout. On the other side, I think it wouldn't be as clean as just using pure CSS. So it's a small downside. We have to set a fixed height, but I think it's a problem that we can play around. So let's start with the first method, which is using the fixed position. It's the simpler method of the two. What I'm going to do here is for the parents, I need to set a fixed height. So I'm going to do like maybe 800 pixels of height. Now I'm going to put it in position relative and I'm going to save that. And with that, we have a nice footer that's 800 pixels of height. And that's like the height that I think looks good. And like I said, I'm going to use the position fixed. And I do not want to use the fixed position on the parent here because it's going to break our layout, right? We want to keep a proper layout, something that we can reuse for all of our pages. So the fixed position, I'm actually going to use it inside of the div here. And so I'm going to put my content inside of it. And so this guy here will be in position fixed. And I need to set the same height as the parent. So the layout stays clean and then I'm going to do width full. So width 100% just so that it takes the full width of the page. And I'm going to do bottom zero because it's a footer. So we always want it to be at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to save that. Let's see what we have now. If I scroll, you're going to see that I basically have a footer that's in position fixed at the bottom here for the whole length of the page. And now if I inspect what's happening here, you're going to see that the main parent here is actually always placed in the right position. It's only the children here in position fixed. That's just always there in our face and we don't really want that. So really all we have to do is based on the parent here, add kind of an overflow hidden. So we're cropping out the fixed position here and we're only seeing it when the parent is actually in the viewport, but we can't use the overflow hidden on the fixed position. So what we're going to use is the clip path. So here we have the clip path. It's very similar to the overflow hidden, but it's a bit more versatile. And now I'm going to use the clip path polygon here. So I'm just going to copy paste that and I want to apply it to the main parent. And so I'm just going to use an inline style for that. I'm going to have a clip path and here it's going to be polygon and I'm going to save that, see what we have. And here I'm going to scroll and you're going to see now here, I kind of have my sticky footer, but it's just not the right crop. It's like this weird shape, but I want it to be a rectangle instead. So here I have four different points of X, Y coordinates. So I'm just going to adjust that first point zero, zero, second point. Let's see X 100 Y zero. The third point is going to be at the bottom right there. So 100, 100 for both axes and the last one zero on the X and 100 on the Y. And boom, with that, we have a nice clip path in a rectangle shape. And now if I scroll, we have this nice kind of sticky reveal effect, as simple as that. And now the downside of this implementation, and that's why I made a second method by using the sticky position, is that now we basically have this fixed element that's going to be behind our content in all of our pages all the time. It's just going to be there floating around behind it. And this could be problematic. It could come in conflict with other things potentially, but that would be like a very specific case. And so really that's the simple method. If it works for you, then good. But if you have some weird bugs or some maybe performance problems, then that's why I made the second method. So for the second method, I'm going to use the position sticky instead of the position fixed. So we're back at zero, nothing here, and we have our regular footer. So it has the same downside as the sticky footer. We need to set a specific height. So I'm going to do class name and I'm going to set a height of 800 pixels. And I'm also going to put it in position relative. And now I'm going to use the sticky position. So what I need to create is a sticky area. So the footer is going to be in position sticky and it needs to stick inside of an area. So I'm going to call that the sticky area. So it's going to be a div that I'm going to create here. And here you're going to see, I'm going to set a specific height of 100 viewport height plus the height of the footer. So in this case, it's going to be 800 pixels. And since it's going to be the parent of the sticky position, I'm going to do position relative here. So that's, it's actually working. 
and I'll put the content here inside. And here I need to add my parentheses. And then we should have something like this, a very huge footer, very big for nothing. But you're going to see there's a specific reason why I made this height like this. Because now what I'm going to do is translate all of that by 100 viewport height on the top, right? So I'm going to put that on top of this guy right here. So I'm going to do top minus top 100 viewport height like this. And so we should have something like this since it has been like translated by 100 viewport height. We don't see the content of the page anymore. And so to fix that, what I'm going to create here is another div. So that's where it gets complicated. We have a lot of nesting here. But in the end, the result is going to be much cleaner, in my opinion, than the fixed method. And so now this div here, I'm going to repeat the same height as the parent. So height of 800 pixels. And this one is going to be in position sticky. And I'm going to do top zero for now. And let's see what I have. Something like this. And if I scroll, you're going to see that it's just staying there like it would be like in a fixed position. And so if I want it to be at the bottom, instead of doing top zero, I'm going to do another calc here. And I'm going to do 100 viewport height minus the height. The height is 800 pixels. So now I'm going to do that and boom, now it's at the bottom. And so now we have a very similar behavior that we had with the fixed position. And so we're going to fix that problem the same way. We're going to use the clip path. So I'm just going to grab the clip path here and then I'm going to apply it to the parent. And that way we're basically cropping everything that's outside the main footer here. I'm going to save that. And now we have a nice sticky footer. Again, a nice revealing effect, a bit of a wild implementation in my opinion it's a bit hacky but we have the same result and this time we don't have any fixed element some weird fixed element floating behind the content of our page we're just going to have two overlapping elements we're going to have the last section of the page and the footer they're going to be overlapping but that's it compared to the fixed position in my opinion it's a bit more clean even though the implementation is a bit more wild. So yeah, that was it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.